This video is going to be on how to hang a Samsung 8K QLED 900R series TV. Um, what a lot of people don't know about this TV is it has what's called a One Connect on it. The 8K version is a lot bigger than the old one used to be. So in case you haven't seen it, this is a Samsung One Connect. Basically all the inputs go into the back of this. Uh, your HDMI's, your Ethernet, your optical. TV tuners even built into it and the power. So they've taken the power supply and all the pieces that were on the back of the TV, put them in this little box here. The thing about it is if you buy a flat mount, you've got to get this behind your TV somehow. This was made to put on a countertop or set flat on something. So as you can see by the back of it, there are feet on there, but there's no way to mount this to the wall. So basically I'm going to hang this on the wall, show you how to get it on the wall behind the TV tucked away um, without any problems. So one of the first things I'm going to do is measure the width of the box. I'm about 15 and a quarter inches wide. This thing is two and a half inches deep. And it's also five inches tall. So when we're mounting the TV, we've got to consider that. So if we're going to put it above the TV, which most likely you will, because the TV is going to tilt forward, leaving enough room, you've got to make sure you take all those numbers in consideration. So I know it's 15 and a quarter inches wide. So basically, I don't want to have to get it perfect because it's going to be behind the TV. If you want to get it perfect, divide 15 and a quarter by two. So I'm going to find the middle of my box. I'm just going to call it seven and a half because it's close to 15. Um, so I'm going to mark the middle of my box. In this case, it's between the LAN port and the first HDMI. So the next thing you'll need is a full motion mount. So basically you need one that pushes and pulls away from the wall. Because as you can see, as thick as this is, there's no way it would fit behind the TV on a flush mount. So you're going to have to use a full motion mount. But basically the middle of my wall is right where the CTV is. So I'm going to take this box and I'll put a couple brackets up. I'm going to mount this to the wall before I mount the TV. And then we'll push the TV back against it and you'll never be able to tell it's back there. What I had to make sure was when I pushed the mount back, I had clear outlet for the power. And I can also get to the cable and the ethernet. So when I mount the mount, I got to take that in consideration also. Along with where the studs are on the wall, where the center of the wall is, because I want to actually get centered between the two windows in this case. I don't want it to be off to the left or the right. And I want to make sure I hit studs with those uh, black bolts. So one of the last things I can do while I've still got this in my hand. Basically what I did is I went out and got some L brackets, um, just lows, uh, two and a half inches wide. And I'm going to put them above the mount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure two inches above the mount. And then I know my center is right there, so I'm going to come six inches off the center each way. I don't want to come seven and a half because I don't want it all the way outside edge. I want these actually sit in and under a little bit. So then after I have it up there, what I'm going to do is take some two-way Gorilla Tape, stick it on there, and then I can stick the uh, uh, one connect on top of that and I don't have to worry about it falling off. So one more thing, you can do this one of two ways. I can either come off the center of my TV, the center of my mount, or the center of the wall. Actually, one of three ways. Personally, I'm going to come off the center of my mount because I'd rather be at dead center over the top of this since it's such a big unit. Uh, it's only a couple inches off from here to here, but uh, I'm still going to go center my mount. So I'm going to come out six inches to the left, six inches to the right, and then two inches up and make my marks on the wall for the bottom part of my mount. So as you can see, I've made a little cross. Basically, this is going to be the bottom of my mount. There's a cross here for the bottom of my mount on that side. And most of the pencil marks will get covered up. You, know, you want to put your um, part of your mounting below the pencil mark if possible. Uh, in this case, uh, they're still touching up paint, so um, if you can be seen, I'll put a couple little pieces of paint or tape on there and we'll touch that up also. All right, the next thing I need to do is put some anchors in the wall to hold the Yale brackets up. What I did is I actually took my drill bit tip, my screwdriver tip, and just scored the wall a little bit. That way my um, drill doesn't slip or my uh, wall anchor doesn't slip. I'm just using plastic anchors. I know there's no stud there. If that keeps you from slipping off, don't over tighten and strip them out. You'll be using bigger anchors. I'm going to do the top ones on both sides. And I'm not going to put the bottom ones in yet because I want to take the bottom ones and actually line them up so I can get them in the exact spot they belong in. Sorry about the wobbly camera there. And start into my pre drill hole. You could drill it if you want to, but Screwdriver tip and sheetrock will usually just poke a hole in it. Alright, so we're going to put the top screw in and the screws are loose so this bracket will move around a little bit. What I want to do next, I want to put a level on here. Now this is optional. It's behind the TV. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
but it has to be pretty close because if you get it too far off, basically you won't make good contact when you set your one connect on there. It won't have a good flat spot to sit on, so then it can be a little wobbly. Like I said, that thing weighs probably seven or eight pounds, so it's not a light piece of equipment. I'm gonna level that one, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it off the wall, and I'm gonna go ahead and mark my two screw holes in the back, and go ahead and put the other two anchors in with it hanging on the wall. And same thing, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the drill, just putting the drill tip in there, and basically just pulling the trigger and grinding it out with the drill bit. Okay, so there you can see I've rotated my uh, brackets inward so I didn't scratch the paint outward. Put my other two anchors in the bottoms and then tighten those up. So now we're ready to put the uh, one connect above the mount. And again, I'll do the mount in um, audio overlay. Again, sorry, there's no way to hang a TV mount on the wall and hold a phone at the same time. At least that I found out without putting a forehead mount on or a neck mount, but that's not gonna happen today. So I cleaned off the top of my mount and I've got my two-way tape in place. So I'm gonna grab the one connect and I'm gonna stick it on top of there. When you put this up there, you wanna make sure you put your video connectors to the top, not to the bottom. Um, so basically the wires will come out on top of the unit. So there's my one, uh, there's my one connect in place. Um, it's on the mount, it's not gonna fall off the wall. The TV is gonna push up against it and keep it in place also. Um, and it's not gonna stick off the wall super far. It's not much more than a regular tilt mount would be. Maybe another inch. So if you're coming in at a side angle, maybe an eyesore, but coming straight on it or sitting in a bedroom like this one is between windows, you'll never know it's back there. So this is the accessory kit you're gonna get with your one connect and your sensor TV. This one cable here is basically what feeds the power, the video, the audio, everything to the TV. So everything plugs into the one connect, and this one cable plugs into the back of the TV. Now, if you've got a situation where you pulled a conduit through your wall, um, you can probably get this through, but it's gonna be really tight. This is probably an inch and a quarter wide. So unless you did an inch and a half or two inch conduit in the wall, uh, you may be trying to find a new way of fishing that around. Um, there's the power cord, again, the power cord plugs into the one connect, and then the remote control. So I've gone ahead and plugged my wires in because it's easier to try and reach behind the TV and do it, plus you're less likely to mar up your wall. I made sure I pulled my power cord through the middle of the mount and back up, so I'll zip tie that up out of the way. So when the mount gets pushed back against the wall, it doesn't cut off the cables. So if you're not careful and you run those wire right, like if you run over the top, you might pinch it in there. So make sure you find a good routing for your wire so you don't pinch it off. And I'm just gonna pull this out so I can hang the TV up on it. Now, if you wanna do this exactly like I'm doing it now, this mount's called a mount up. It's a full motion mount. Um, my homeowners picked these up, so I might have to check and see, but I'm pretty sure they got these on Amazon. Uh, but this fits really nice on the back of this TV. Uh, the four mounting bolts are really close to the center on this TV. As you can see, it's a really wide view. It does not give you much room to go left or right. So if your TV is not really close to the middle of the wall, um, with, a, with a mount like this, you're only going to have like four or six inches of play. So you get too far left, too far right, you'll never be able to center the TV. So take that in consideration. Okay, so this mount um, has little um, screws in here. So I'm going to loosen these screws up. This is the hanging bar, but since the center hangs, it's gonna hang right where my thumb is. And again, if you look at that, you can only go, you know, four inches at the most to the left or the right to center your TV. So again, luckily mine's already pretty close to center. And my center TV is to the right of that hole. So when I put the mount on the back of the TV, I've got to consider that. I'm actually gonna push my mount off this way because I want to do center of the wall. So if I take that in my hand, just like it is, and I turn it around when I put the mount on here, I want it to be off to the right-hand side. That pushes the TV to the left. If you go to the left, it pushes the TV right. Sounds backwards, but if you look at it from the front, it does what you think it does. To get this as close as I possibly can without having to move the TV over, I'm gonna take my tape measure, I'm gonna measure from my wall marking to my center TV marking. So I'm about one, uh, one and a quarter inches, and that will just keep me from having to slide it back and forth on the wall. So on the back of my mount, my gap here is six, uh, almost seven inches. Sorry. So my gap back here is six and a half inches. So the middle of my mount is actually three and a quarter inches. So I'm going to do three and a quarter minus one. That puts me at two and a quarter. So my mount is pretty much center. I need to come back to the left just a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that'll be pretty close to perfect, and I won't have to move the TV once I hang it on the wall. So after that, I tightened down the brackets that hold the um, 
mount in place, that'll keep my bar from sliding left and right. I wanna take the bolts out that do the tilting and actually hold the TV from falling off the bracket. So when we hang this, we're gonna hang it on that one little piece of metal. So when you let go, you gotta be sure that you're hooked on that piece of metal all the way. Sometimes it fits on there, then it'll slide down in. So make sure you don't let go of your TV too soon. Uh, make sure you're hooked. Now, before I put these TVs up, what you gotta do is you gotta figure out how high your TV is. Uh, overall length, how high it is from the mounting point, which is right here, not the middle of the bar, to the top of the TV. So I had, 12 inches up, and basically that gives me plenty of room so the one connect's gonna sit right between like one and four there. And then I gotta measure from the bottom up to the middle of the mount. And I'm just gonna demonstrate this without taking it out by my hand, but basically up to the bottom of the TV and measure up to the bottom of the mount. So if it's 16 inches in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna put the mount on the wall and just hold it there or have somebody hold it for you. Measure down 16 inches, and that'll show you where your TV is gonna hang on the wall. From, from the mounting point down is 16 inches, and I got 12 inches up, that gives me my overall, so I know for a fact I'm gonna cover the top, I'm gonna cover my wall plates, and I'm not gonna be too high up on the bottom of the wall, so if they wanna put a chest of drawers under there, there's plenty of room for it. Now I hang most of these TVs by myself. I do up to 65, depending on the, the make and model. These QLEDs are a little bit heavier. Uh, 55 is probably my max. But when I go to pick this up, a lot of people make the mistake, um, professionals and homeowners, I've seen both do it, of grabbing the size of the TV. Now, some of these have these grab points to keep you from smashing your screen. It's still not made to squeeze your hand and smash the screen. You still need to get up under the TV and lift the TV up if there's two of you. If at all possible, like in this case, this mounting bar right here is attached to the back of the TV. You can lift on that and you don't have to worry about breaking your screen. So if you can grab that, grab the mounting bar and hook it that way. Personally, I'm gonna grab both sides, left and right, and I'm gonna kind of overhead press, I'm gonna back up to the wall and just hook it over the back of my head. So as you can see, basically I just picked it up, hooked it on the top, my screws aren't in the back yet. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get my screws in the back of there so my TV doesn't fall off the wall when I'm moving it around. All right, so my screws are tight in the back there, and that's a swivel point. So what I want to do is I want to tighten them enough that I can still move the TV. Fairly easy, but you don't want it to just fall over. So those are going to be snug, but not super tight. That way, when you push and pull the TV, if you get it off a little bit, or if you turn it at an angle, you might have to adjust the left and right a little bit. So snug, but not over tightened. So I'm going to ram my Ethernet line down the wall because my TV is hardwired here. If yours is wireless, you don't need to do that. Zip tie the power cord up best as possible. And on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the one connect. Again, this has only got one plug. It fits under that TV, and I should have mentioned that earlier too. Make sure when you put your mount on, the mount will actually clear the one connect. If not, you'll be doing it all over again. I've left enough wire there that I can actually just uh, run this through. It only fits in there one way, so. So I got a zip tie in my mouth here. And that clicks in like that. And now I'm gonna finish tying up my wire to the side so I don't pinch it in the mount. Make sure you leave enough loose end on this side so if they do pull the TV out or if you pull the TV out, you're not gonna pull the uh, cable out of the back of the TV and do some damage. So I've got that tied up to the top of the mount so it won't fall down, won't get pinched in place. And all I need to do is push my TV back. When you get it back there, make sure you just stick your head around there and make sure you're not pinching anything. Um, shouldn't be, should be clear by everything. Uh, just double check and make sure if you're pinching something, pull it back, tie it back in place where it doesn't get smashed. Uh, you may be a lot more careful than the next time you pull it out or if your homeowner pulls it out, uh, they may just crush it in the wall. So make sure it's somewhere where it doesn't get crushed.